So what I want to talk about this evening is uh, what, what I'm referring to as a paradigm shift in, uh, in measuring the user experience. And, and, and of course, that's just a fancy way of saying that I think we ought to change a little bit what, we, uh, what, we're, what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> there are, if this actually works, there we go. Um, so I've got a proposition for you, um, and that is that I think usability testing, as many of us you know, sort of know it and love it, ha has really focused too much and for too long on finding out what's wrong with something. So you know, I I've never been any good at, at visual design or graphic design, so I, I'm, so I decided to stretch, try to stretch a bit here and use some like clip art and so forth in my, uh, so I hope you'll, you'll, you'll bear with me and not uh, groan too much at some of my, uh, oh, I kind of like that one. I think that actually works, uh, works pretty well. So it's really focused on finding the problems uh, with an interface. And speaking of problems with interfaces, um, <clears throat> so, so, so let me uh, back up here, okay. There's a time lag here between when I push this and it actually advances. So I think we now have some of the tools that'll really, uh, tools and techniques that'll help us to sort of move away from that, that, that approach of just finding problems to something where we can um, you know, more accurately measure the impact of the designs that we're testing on the actual user experience. So I wanna start with an example. And here's, here's my example. This is the fidelity.com homepage. Um, as it would have looked about a year and a half ago, but with today's articles. So, so you get what I'm saying? This is how it would have looked about a year and a half ago using, so I didn't wanna, you know, I didn't wanna use the articles from a year and a half ago, so I'm using, actually it's the articles from I think yesterday, not today, it was when I took the screenshot. So, what I'm going to show you next is what it looks like today. Now, be prepared for this. Be ready. So everybody brace yourselves. So here's what it would look like today. <laughs> there actually was a change. There actually, so I'm going to go back. Let me see if I can go back. So, so uh, let's see if you can, let's see if you, so there it is. And now, so I think some of the ones from Fidelity know what, know what this is. Um, so now watch, watch, watch very carefully. Uh, well, the green box, the green, don't, don't, the, the green box doesn't count. Did News and Insights? The tabs changed order. The tabs changed order? I don't think so. <laughs> what, but, 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 but you're in the right ballpark. So still nobody sees it? So one more time, That's, this, is, this is how it would have looked a year and a half ago, and now here. Well, it's not supposed to be a lighter green. If it is, that's a mistake. <laughs> so you had the right area with the tabs. So I see one in the back, yes? Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. So retirement and guidance. <laughs> versus guidance and retirement. Now, I will come back to this later in my presentation that they're actually, it actually made a difference. It actually made a difference, and, and I'll show you later what the, what the difference was, and I'll actually give you some hypotheses for why I think it, uh, think it actually did make a difference. So, so one of my, in terms of this whole measuring the user experience, I, I decided to, I don't know, put some funny things in here. So what I'm not talking about <laughs> is, is this kind of thing. I love this guy's expression. It's like, oh my God, what's he going? It's like the joke I always make in our usability lab is, oh, we'll keep the electric shock turned down low this time. Uh, uh, we're also not, I found these like totally bizarre things on the, uh, on the web. And, and, and yeah, we have an eye tracker. We have an eye tracking system in our lab, but thankfully it's not quite as obtrusive as that one. Um, and, 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 or that one. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I love this one too. Can you just imagine somebody during a usability test that comes, oh, mind me, pay no attention to me. You know, okay. 
Okay, so I'm not talking about any of those things. So what I am talking about is a little bit of a shift in perspective. Here's my dumb clip art again. Uh, a little bit of a shift in perspective from, from what, it's a, to use an analogy to the medical field, it, it's, it, you know, a lot of physicians will, will talk about that they try, to, they try to move away from just treating you when you're sick to helping you be well, you know, to a sort of, sort of a wellness approach. So that's kind of the, the, the idea that I'm trying to play up here, that it's from a sort of disease-centered approach to usability. And that's a really dumb clip art thing, but anyway, <laughs> to, a, to a wellness-focused approach uh, that, that really tries to study what are the things that are working well in some interface and maybe to then apply those in other areas or to, you know, to fine-tune them some more. So what I want to do is describe, I think, three characteristics of this shift, and then I'm going to spend most of the rest of my time showing you some examples from some, from some studies that I think illustrate this. So three of the main characteristics. First, it's typically comparative. In other words, you know, I'm sure that the vast majority of you who have done usability testing, the vast majority of our usability tests are one-shot deals. You've got this thing that you're going to test, and then you're going to come out with some report that tries to, you know, hopefully tries to improve it. Well, what I've found is that with this, at least the approach that I'm talking about here, you learn so much more if you can compare some alternatives. So I'll show you some examples of that. Um, it, it usually does involve some multiple measurements. It's usually not just something as simple as, you know, task completion rates or, or, or just one thing. It usually is multiple things. And yes, I know stats is a little scary for some people, but usually it does kind of involve that too. Um, and it commonly involves larger numbers of participants, larger numbers of users than we are generally uh, testing in most like, like usability lab types of tests. So um, I want to start with an example of a, of a study that was kind of a little simple throwaway study. Uh, it was looking at different, we were comparing three different approaches to how you would navigate a database of clip art photos, ironically enough. In fact, I think that's probably where I got some of these photos was from that uh, same database. Um, it did involve multiple measurements, task success, task time, uh, subjective ratings, a, a variety of things. And um, here, I'll keep, sorry, I keep going. If I can just deal with the delay, maybe I'll actually use this thing. Um, 1,308 participants. When was the last time you did a usability test with 1,308 participants? <laughs> um, uh, this has been a long time. Well, in fact, like never for me. Um, and uh, thankfully, uh, that would be, uh, I would have spent like two years doing that probably. Um, 400 plus per condition in this study, and then they were doing five uh, tasks, uh, each of these people was. Um, so here's, the, here's the, uh, the study, basically, or here's the, the things that we were testing. Uh, this is actually the homepage for the, for the clip art gallery. And then all we were testing was just different approaches to that table of contents on the left. Now, you know, these are things that so many of us have, de have dealt with multiple times. Okay, well, what, how, you know, we're going to have a left-hand TOC. Well, how should it be structured? How should it work? How should you, you know, whatever. So... This is one of the three conditions that we tested. In this one, the, it was a static TOC. It's just all there. It's hierarchical. It's like you took the table of contents and you just stuck it over there in that, uh, in that left frame. By the way, so I always, as, so, so the people on my team make me promise not to tell any jokes when I do these, when I do these talks, but, I, but I'm going to do one. This, sorry, this is, and it's not the Canada joke. Sorry, no, sorry. you can ask me later about that. Um, so I've got to tell this one story. This is from a, a usability test we did a long time ago where we, we recruit, and I thought of it because of this frame on the left. Um, and that's how my brain works sometimes. So, sorry. so, so we, had, we were not supposed to have any rank novice computer users in this test, right? So we, we did the recruit. They were supposed to have at least had some experience in using the web, using a computer. Well, we got this one guy in who really hadn't, he, he, I don't know how he sneaked through the screener, but he did. Uh, he had just bought his first computer at Best Buy the week before. And it's important that it's Best Buy, right? I think Michelle knows this, uh, knows this story. You don't remember this one? <clears throat> okay. No, you're not, you're not claiming to remember it. So he had just bought his first computer at Best Buy the previous week. So he said, okay, we'll go on and give it a try. And we're having him use a prototype. And the prototype actually has a left nav very much like this in a separate frame. 
And of course, we have to show him really how to use the mouse and everything. And so it's, it's, it's being kind of tedious, but we're making progress and we're going along. And then partway through the test, he points to the, to this, uh, to this scroll, the scroll, there was a scroll bar for the, for the left nav. He points to that scroll bar and he says, you know, I really like that. I've got to go back to Best Buy and get me one of those. <laughs> We told him we'd sell him one cheap. <laughs> so, so this is not, like not quite getting the mental model behind how this whole web thing works, you know, right? Got to get me one of those left-hand scroll bars to go on my computer. So anyway, sorry, sorry for the diversion. I, anyway, I'm trying to keep you awake. Um, so that was the first of the three, uh, the three approaches was the static table of contents. Um, <clears throat> And what I want to do is I'm going to show you actually what the tasks were like, and I'll show you the other, the other conditions in a minute. Um, so the tasks were things like this. You're supposed to find, uh, we, show eventually, we show basically a small version of a photo, and then you have to find the, the large version of it. So here's a, a small version of the flashlight. Uh, so you're now starting to navigate around in the, uh, in the site. And so you've chosen uh, under everyday objects, you see this thing that says general use and you try that and you get these, uh, you get these up here. So now I see, the, I see the flashlight there, so I click on that and I then get a full size version of it. And then the thing, you actually, the thing that you're actually looking for is what the name, the actual title of that thing is because that's what you then uh, select in the, in the online study. So, uh, and we're measuring how long it takes people to do this and, and of course how accurate they are in terms of finding their answers in various kinds of subjective ratings. So uh, this is uh, a second condition, what's called the expand collapse table of contents. So in this version, the user is uh, free. It's one of these, you know, you've all seen these things uh, where you can, you can expand various sections by clicking the plus or you can close them back up by clicking the minus once you've uh, opened them up. And you can freely expand and collapse sections as you, as you wish. Um, <clears throat> the third condition that we tested, sometimes I never know if it, okay, let's try it again. Now watch it, okay. So this is what's called the auto collapse table of contents condition. And I think you've probably seen this one too. And the thing that's different about this one is that as soon as, like if I click on people here, then the one that's currently open, food and beverages, will automatically close. So you never have more than one, one you know, thing open at, open at once. So it, that's why I call it the auto collapse condition. Okay. So, there just for recap purposes, there are the three different conditions. Now is when we start the audience participation. So, your, yeah, so, so and this is going to be my, this is the first time I've experimented with this. On this next slide, we're going to try something. So now is the time to get out your cell phones. Get out your cell phones or your iPhones or your iPads or your Blackberries or any of those things. And I hope you have, I hope you have service in this room. I, I assume you probably do. Um, and, and what I want you to do is to, I want you to decide what you think of these three. So we did this big online study. What was it, 13 some odd, 1,300 participants or whatever? Which of these three do you think was the most effective? I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say any more about what I mean by the most effective. Which you think was the most effective? And so, so decide that now, and then, uh, so, so just sort of refresh your memory there. Anybody have any questions about what the three, how the three conditions worked? No questions? So static table of contents, expand collapse table of contents, or, yes? So they all have the same level of uh, yep. Yes, they all have the same number of levels. The hierarchy is exactly the same in all three. It's just a question of, the, of how you interact with that, uh, with that hierarchy. Um, so I'll, I'll come back to this slide if I need to, but let me go on to this slide, and I hope this is going to work. So far, it doesn't look too promising. Okay, hang on. Oh, come on. No, okay, so bear with me one second. 
Uh, I had to have a backup plan here. It should have, I don't know why that didn't work. So there's this, uh, there's, a, there's a website called Poll Everywhere. Uh, oh goodness, what is some, maybe something's wrong with my internet connection. Maybe that's why it's not working. Well, let's hope it's working. Okay, so the question is, which of those three navigation, my goodness, this is slow. Don't click. It did. Where? At the bottom of the previous screen, it said, don't click here. Really? Boy, isn't that tempting to then want to click on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Okay. So, um, here's the way this works. Um, you, you, so, those are the three conditions, static TOC, expand collapse TOC, and auto collapse TOC. And what you need to do is, and probably the easiest thing is, whoa, people, okay, so people already have the idea here or somebody does. So if you're using text messaging, you want to send your text message to that number, 22333, and then the content of the text message is either that number if you want the static TOC, that number for the expand collapse, or that number for the auto collapse. So let's, so does everybody understand? Or if you would prefer, you can also go to that website, poll4.com. But I think people have the idea now, so let's just let it run for just a moment here and we'll see. <laughs> this is fun. I like this. I, I like this. I don't know why it didn't work. You're supposed to be able to embed it in, in PowerPoint, but for some reason that didn't seem to work. So, uh, <laughs> Yes, I actually, I actually set it up so that people could vote more than once if they wanted to. Uh, and the reason I set it up that way is in case somebody wanted to hand their phone to the person next to them to the to then also if they did somebody didn't have a phone, so. Uh, yes, correct. So you're te you're texting one of those two five or two six whatever numbers, two, two two three three three. Well, well, yeah, let's see what's interesting. So, so think about this for a second. So, so the number, the 22333, is the same for all of these things. And so the number that you're texting to it has to actually uniquely identify the, 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 the survey as well as what the response is. Uh, because that number, the 22333, is the same for all of their surveys. So it's an interesting little tool. If, if you only care about getting 30 responses, it's free. Th up to 30 responses is free. I went ahead and signed up for a version that gives you up to like 200 for, for I think, uh, $60 for the month or something like that. So, okay. Uh, I mean, a lot, quite a few people have responded now. Um, it looks, you know, I, I, I can't like do a calculation in, in my head for figuring out the confidence interval for, this, uh, for these responses, which uh, the students who have been in my class at Bentley will... Uh, will we'll be mad at me for not being able to put confidence intervals on here. Uh, but it's looking like the auto collapse TOC is, is losing. Uh, it's a pretty darn close race between the static TOC and the expand collapse. So, so let me go back to the deck. Um, <clears throat> and we will look at the results. So by the way, if you wouldn't mind, keep track of uh, whether or not you got the right answer, and so there there is a right answer in that in that I will show you what the data you know what the data is saying. Um, so to so keep track of, of of how many you get right. So here's the accuracy data. This is just did they find the right answer to the question uh, in terms of finding the finding that piece of clip art. And uh, what you see here, so the, all the error, so I do have confidence intervals on most of my graphs here. Uh, these are 90% confidence intervals. Uh, so basically, if two of them don't overlap with each other, you can assume they are significantly different from each other. So the static TOC is actually significantly better than the expand collapse. The auto collapse one, oddly, is something in between the two. Um, here's the time data. This is just how long it took people to do each of these tasks. And the, the static TOC actually took significantly less time than the expand collapse one. And again, auto collapse was somewhere in between, although I think the difference between static TOC and auto collapse uh, approached significance. 
And here is actually uh, this efficiency metric that I like to use, which is basically the number correct per minute. So it's a combination of the two previous metrics. It's how, you know, how accurate are people being and in conjunction with how fast, how fast they're being. Uh, so it's number correct per minute. And in this case, you see that the static TOC is, is clearly coming out the winner. So the correct answer is the static TOC. Um, in this uh, in this study now so first of all uh, so, so now let's talk about it as designers for a minute does that mean that that's going to universally apply everywhere of course not uh, but it, it certainly is indicative that this kind of static TOC is maybe more effective than some of us give it give it credit for um, um, the auto collapse one frankly I expected the auto collapse one just like I think most of you expected it to be the real clear obvious loser um, it, it didn't really come out that way. So, so there's maybe, see, the thing that I don't like about the auto collapse is that it, things are changing, things are, things are moving around. The locations of things are moving around as a side product of your selecting on one of the, uh, one of the, one of the items. Um, <clears throat> and interestingly, the static, t so one of the other ratings was we asked people, to rate this task was very difficult to very easy. Uh, so each, each task got that rating. And, oh, oh, by the way, I, sorry, I should have explained. This was a totally between subjects design. Most of these designs, most of these studies that we do are between, between groups or between subjects, what, meaning that each person only used one of these. Each person in the study used either the static TOC or the auto collapse or the uh, whatever the other one was, the, the, the expand collapse. Uh, and they never even saw the other ones. Um, and so people actually felt that it was easier with the static TOC as well. Uh, and then I like to calculate this overall usability index, which is just an equal weighted measure, e equal weighted combination of the speed, accuracy, and time, which actually looks very similar to the, uh, to the efficiency metric. Okay, so now back to this one. This is the, the retirement and guidance versus guidance and retirement. Okay. So we had actually had a suspicion for a while. So first of all, our website, this fidelity.com site, has not changed dramatically in, in, I don't know, many years. <laughs> I don't know how many years. We don't, you know, Fidelity is not exactly known for being risky in terms of let's, oh, let's try out some new thing. You know, we do try out new things in little pieces on our sites, but, but in terms of uh, just major, major changes to the site, we, we proceed fairly cautiously as this is indicative of. But so for a long time, that tab said retirement and guidance. And in a number of studies that we had done in the usability lab, we had seen that people sometimes had trouble finding some of the kinds of guidance types of tasks, like college planning, for example, college planning information, saving for, you know, saving for college for your kids, um, actually falls under retirement and guidance and now under guidance and retirement, but people sometimes had trouble finding it, finding it there. So um, we were suspicious that it was a problem, and then we were doing this, we were doing a study actually for other reasons, and, and just sort of on the spur of the moment, we said, Hmm, let's try doing guidance and retirement instead of retirement and guidance. That was, for those two conditions of the study, that was absolutely the only difference between these two was those words, retirement and guidance, guidance and retirement. Here's some of the kinds of tasks. There was a whole bunch of tasks that we were having people do. And, and of course, not all of the tasks are ones where you find the answers in that, in that area. They're, they're, they're all over the, you know, they're all over the site. But here's the data. This is from 455 participants. The first graph, top left, this is just, did they find the right answers to their questions? They were significantly more likely to find the answers when it was guidance and retirement. Likewise, up at the top right, one of the things that we asked them after each task was, how confident are you? Because this was actually a study, I don't know how to describe it, but it's basically one where you pick where you think the answer will be, but you don't really see the contents at that point. You basically just you get an identification of the, of the page, but that's all. They were significantly more confident that they, that they found the right answer, and their perception of how long it took them to do it was that it was faster. All because of, I was, I was floored by this. This is amazing. 
just flipping these two words. And it made this, I mean, now I will admit, none of these are huge differences, but they are all statistically significant. Okay, so there is something reliable going on there. And what was even more interesting was it wasn't just the tasks where the answer was in that area. It was across the board. It was mostly, of course, in those tasks, but tasks where the answer was in other areas. And, that, and we've actually seen that in some other studies just recently where we saw that, that you know, a change in one particular area, even though it, it, you, you think it's going to mostly impact the, the, the cases where people are looking in that area for something, but in fact, it's a, there's a gestalt. There's a whole, you know, it, it, making one change actually has an impact on how all the rest of it is interpreted as well. So that was, in fact, what happened here. Yeah? Good question. Um, I know Fidelity has had this whole guidance branding. Was this before or after? Um, the whole like before the green line branding. How many people have seen the ads, the green line stuff? Boy, that is, that is certainly a, you know, I, I mean, that's, Fidelity has done some pretty lame ad campaigns in the past, but, but the green line thing actually seems to have gotten some brand, brand awareness. Um, it was, mm, I think it was before, although I don't remember. It's a, it's a good question. I don't, I don't remember. It was right at the beginning of it? Okay. Yeah, that's right. This was your study. I forgot to get you up here to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What was the This was actually done with our own Fidelity employees. Now, so Fidelity employees are an interesting case because you, you would, ex so first of all, the Fidelity employees you would expect would be more familiar with the current, so, so they were more likely to know the current site. So they, if anything, they would have been more likely to know the retirement and guidance one. But in fact, they did worse on that one than they did on the guidance and retirement one. So interesting question. We get into this. All, so so it's a, it is a wide range of, of ages from 20s through their 60s. Um, it is obviously all people who are working. Surprisingly, we have found that our own employees are actually a pretty good proxy for our customers. We've done a lot of demographic analyses, both of our employees and our customers. And, and a lot of similarity. Uh, the, only, the only difference is that, that the employees, as you would imagine, consistently know, on average, know a bit more about financial stuff than the average customer does. But when you think about it, there's lots of people like me who like, you know, you wouldn't want me managing your money, that's for sure. Um, uh, or, or, you know, people, secretaries, finance people, all, all kinds of people who really have nothing to do with the, with the actual money management side of, of Fidelity. Now, there, any other questions? Okay. So, anyway, another, uh, this was to me so interesting and so surprising. Oh, by the way, so hypotheses. Why do you think, why do you think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Um, I, I think a slight variation on that is that you you read the first word, and then if you do read the second word, you potentially interpret the second word in the context of the first one. So, and the other thing is, I think there's a good. It's just an ampersand between them, and and so if you miss the ampersand, you might read the first one as as retirement guidance. Because retirement can modify guidance. But with the second one, you read it as guidance retirement. Well, that doesn't work. They don't, you know, they don't quite play together in the same way. So I think that is the, that, that's my hypothesis. Yeah. Why are they together if one does not modify the other? Why don't you just have a separate chapter for guidance? Um, uh, good question. <laughs> I'm not sure I know the answer to it. Um, it, uh, it, it. It's because that's the way it was. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, no, honestly, I don't. I mean, I think the reason is that there are actually a lot of there's a lot of overlap between some of the guidance and retirement pieces. A lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the guidance type pieces actually do relate to retirement, but they have other aspects as well. Like, for example, you're trying to decide whether you should pay off your debt or save for retirement, or should you, you know, be saving for your kid's college education. Versus, so so they do kind of play together in the same in the same space, and so that's why they're not. That's why they're not separated. Uh, interesting thing is we actually are in the midst of a, of a, a big study right now looking at a, a re-architecting or a, re, a new information architecture for the, uh, for the whole site, which is actually something we haven't done in eight or 10 years, I think, basically. Yeah. I, I would suggest guidance and goals, something that's 
Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I Oh, really? Even with having the, yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's interesting. I actually have seen the latest version of what they're what they're considering, and and the word retirement actually doesn't appear anywhere in the uh, in the new one, which is a uh, which is actually well, yeah, nobody's ever going to be able to retire. Uh, it's interesting. There's a there there are some people who believe that the word retirement is is a is a no no. That it's not a it's not a word you should be using. Yeah, um, so I, I don't know how it'll eventually play out. Um, there, there's a lot of people within the company, a lot of senior business people who like think, you, what, you're not going to have a tab that has retirement on it? How can we possibly, you know, because it's obviously a huge business for us is, is that whole retirement savings. Anyway, okay, let's move on. Sorry, I've I'm, I'm, uh, got to pay attention to time here. Sorry, that's my, I shouldn't have told the story about the guy with the left-hand left -hand scroll bar. Okay. Um, Another example. This is uh, from our other major website. The, as some of you may know, uh, Fidelity also runs a website called Net Benefits, uh, which is for uh, workplace participants, employees at various companies where we run the 401k for them. And we wanted to experiment with different visual treatments for this um, messaging area up here, this one that says, Annette, did you, did you know? the name that we used internally for the, so you know I have the personas and so forth. So one of the names that we used was Annette Saver. Uh, I know, isn't it terrible? <laughs> it was really lame, huh? I didn't come up with that one, so. Um, okay, so uh, we, this was a study we did in the lab with 20 participants. Uh, it was an eye tracking study. And um, I believe I have a slide here that shows, okay, so here are, the four different visual treatments. The text was the same in each case and the four different visual treatments. So guess what's coming next? Here we go again, get out your cell phones. <laughs> the question is, which of those four designs do you think got the most visual attention, the most visual fixations in the, in the study? And Michelle, you can't vote because I think you know the answer. <laughs> You're asking just about I'm exactly, exactly. I'm just talking about how much visual attention, and and in fact, I'm actually mainly interested in visual attention on the on the text. I, I don't care so much about attention on the uh, on the picture, except that it, uh, except to any extent that it might have impacted the attention on the on the text. So yeah, the question is, which of those four got the most? So here's the, so, so you got the, you, you sort of see, so decide which number you want as your answer. And now here is, oh, sorry. And now here, oops, I gotta go back to my, so bear with me a second while I flip out of, or I flip out, yeah, right. Oh no, wait, wait, it's working this time. Oh, it was about to work, it was about to work. Okay, wait, let's try it again, let's try it again. Try it, oh, load, 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 load. Maybe, possibly. Uh, on the message, on the message. So, uh, so the same, the same number that you're sending the text to, two, two, three, 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 and then there are the. So, so if you, <laughs> I hope you don't need me to go back to the previous slide because if we come back here, it'll probably never work again. Um, whoa, this is fun. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yes, it was one, two, three, four. So I think the two with the pictures were at the bottom, were three and four. Uh, one was the dark background, two was the white. So one was the, the text only with the dark background, two was text with a light background, three was, I hope I'm saying this right, three was, um, I don't know, light background picture, and four was dark background picture. Anybody want me to repeat that? <laughs> Anybody want me to repeat that? I think I said it right. So this is interesting. They're, they're pretty, pretty widely, uh, fairly widely separated, although it looks like design three, which I believe was light background with photo. Is that, does that sound right? It was light background plus photo seems to be the, the winner. Um, and everybody, are we are we good here? Are we? Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I guess we did, didn't we? Um, this is kind of fun. I like this. Okay, so oh, there we go. We're getting some more, getting some more. So the so the design three is uh, pulling out, pulling out ahead here. So total total results fifty. I guess fifty people have uh, have have voted. That's that's not bad. Okay, so let's look at the um, let's look at the actual results. Um, here are the heat maps from the from the eye tracker. Um, <laughs> So, so, so by far, this one with the white background, uh, by the way, the red X's represent clicks. This one by far got the most fixations and the most clicks. It was not even a close, close race, yeah. It's not time that's fixated, This is fixations, yeah. Yeah, this is number of fixations in this, in this area. So, so the uh, actually the, the 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 other three were relatively close. And I'll, here, let me show you the actual data. Uh, so here's the here's several actually several different versions. Uh, the total number of fixations, the total fixation time, and the number of clicks on the on that particular one. So um, sorry, I said A B C D here. I should have should have used that in the uh, anyway. So obviously that impacted everything by not calling it A B C D. Um, uh, absolutely not. When we did this study, um, I thought for sure it was going to be the one, either the one, either the one with the blue background or the one with the blue background plus the photo. Um, and I was totally blown out of the water when I saw that the plain white one uh, was the one that actually actually got the most. So um, the um, so why is that? Why do you think this one got the most fixations and the most clicks? Yes, I think that's it. I think that, I mean, yeah, maybe you could argue it's maybe easier to read, but you could say the same thing about this one, I think. So, yeah, I think all three of these look like ads. They look like ads. And we have seen the same thing in a dozen different studies now. In a dozen different studies. That anything that looks vaguely ad-like, at least on our sites. Now we're talking financial services. Financial services is pretty, you know, pretty serious stuff. And so on a, on a financial services side, at least, anything that seems to look vaguely ad-like gets visually filtered out. So yeah, was there a question? I thought I, thought I saw a hand, maybe. Oh, yeah. So the question I have is, is that something that you actually pulled the users like, as to why afterwards? Like, we, you, we, you know, yeah, no, we did. Right. We, we did ask people about this afterwards. And yeah, they, when, when we showed it to them again, they basically said, oh, you know, I thought it was some kind of ad. Or I mean, I'm not sure they all used the term ad, but they said, uh, it looked like it was something I didn't really want to be paying attention to or didn't need to be paying attention to. Um, <clears throat> OK, so there's that, uh, there's that data. And, and I want to show you one more follow-up. We did a follow-up study to that one. Um, I actually had an intern here, uh, was it a couple of summers ago, I guess, who was very intrigued by those results. And she had actually done some literature uh, searching in, in looking at um, face recognition and how people, are, are people drawn to faces on web pages? And um, this time what we were doing was we were, well, here's some of the background. This is some of the stuff that she had found. So uh, for, there's actually some evidence that face recognition is hardwired into our brains and that babies can actually do it better than adults can. We actually lose some of the ability as we get older. Um, and in certain studies that we've done on Fidelity.com, we have seen that in certain situations, people really seem to be drawn to faces on web pages. And these are just some of the heat maps from, from some of those. Um, so what we wanted to, oh, and yeah, by the way, this is from the advertising literature. I don't know if you've seen this. I think it's really fascinating. So here's these two print ads, and the only difference between the two is where she's looking with the one eye that you can see, and here she's glimpsing toward the product, and look at what a difference it made in where the viewer of the ad looked. The viewer was far more likely to look at the product when the model was looking at the, at the product. So... Guess what we were testing? <laughs> so, so we tested four different, so I know, it's, I know it's a little random. This was just an intern. I said, okay, look, you can spend your summer doing this. We'll, you know. so, so we tested four different versions, the one without any image, 
Uh, two versions with the face, one where the model was looking toward the copy, and we thought, well, you know, we'll give it a try, see what happens. Um, and then just for comparison, a light bulb graphic. Uh, there were actually, this was done as both an online study, 884 participants, and an eye tracking study in the lab with 59 participants, which in retrospect I realized this is like one of these torture your intern types of things. Can you imagine running 59 participants in the lab with the eye tracker? But she was, she was game for it, she did it. Um, my favorite intern, my, my favorite, oh sorry, another diversion. My, my favorite story of torturing an intern was <laughs> one, one where, where I, had, I had a bunch of video clips from, from, um, from a usability test and we were trying to assess something about how stressed the user was in each of these various scenarios. Um, and in particular, if they were getting visually fatigued because we were, we were testing like different font sizes in this application and so forth. So I had an intern watch videos from these lab sessions and count how many times the participant blinked. <laughs> yeah, she never came back. But <laughs> anyway, anyway, so this was... Um, <laughs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Okay, um, so one of six tasks, there were actually six tasks altogether, so one of them was what I call the critical task, how much would you need to increase your 401k contribution so you get your full match from your employer. Just to show you, by the way, the, the context again that this was shown in um, this, this area right this area right here. It's actually on what's called the portfolio summary page of, uh, of fidelity.com. And um, okay. This is our last, is it going to work? Why do some of them work and some of them don't? I don't get this. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Good idea. Good idea. Tell more jokes. I'll tell the Canada joke. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I'm really sunk now. Huh? Um, I can try clicking on it, but no, that just takes me. Whoops, 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 whoops. Yeah, so you probably saw the answer there. But anyway, let's try it anyway. So let me go out and go to here, and that's back to here. Uh, sorry, bear with me one second. And... Look here, grab the bottom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, I want to try I'll try it later, maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to live dangerously yet. Okay, um, so which of the four do you think got the most, uh, drew the most attention to that, to that area? And in this case, I'm actually, uh, I am talking about eye tracking data, but I'm also talking about things like how quickly they found the information and, and several, you know, things like that. <clears throat> So, those, so I think these are at least fairly descriptive. Face sideways means that the model was glimpsing toward the copy. And face ahead means that she's looking straight out from the, uh, from the page. Wow. Wait a minute. That was kind of weird, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. So we're up to 35, 38 total results. So... So, so uh, the light bulb is winning so far. <clears throat> up to 46. Oh, face sideways is getting, uh, is getting a little bit up there. No image is getting a little bit up there. And, and hardly anybody likes the face ahead. The face ahead one does have a little bit of a, you know, I don't know. She's looking sort of like staring straight out. She looks a little bit, whoa, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, we're up to 49, which is probably about as, about as many we're, as we're going to get. So, so it seems pretty clear that the light, that's, a, that's interesting. So people think the light bulb. So, so you're kind of ignoring all that literature that says that people are drawn to faces, or at least some, some of you are ignoring that. Although some people like the face sideways, glimpsing toward the, uh, glimpsing toward the copy. So what did we find? Um, um, <clears throat> so when the, whoops, sorry, <laughs> hit the wrong button. Where is it? There it is. So when the face was there, um, so this is the accuracy data for the critical task. This is just, did they even find the answer? When the face was there, they were dramatically less likely to just find the answer. And look, this is not a little difference. This is like, 
you know, 78% versus, versus 93% correct. It's a huge difference. And for the ones who did find the answer, this is the time data, it took them dramatically longer when the face was there. And let me show you a clip from, an, from one of the eye tracking sessions in the lab that illustrates what was going on. Come on. I think it's trying to come up. <laughs> Seems like it, doesn't it? Well, this is, but this is local on my computer, so I'm having to dial up to my C drive or something. I don't know. Maybe it didn't catch. Oh, there we go. Okay. Whoops. So let, let me let me pause it here real quick. Um, okay. So this is actually the way our online studies are structured. The the task is being shown up here. The website is below. She's actually part way into it already. Um, so how much would you need to increase your 401k contribution so you get your full match from your employer? Well, there's the answer right there. Did you know increase your 401k contribution from? Okay. There's the answer. But watch what she does. Um, so let me start it back up again. Actually, let me, uh, let me go back to the beginning and start it. Okay, so um, she's about to read the task. Okay, so she's uh, reading the task now. And then she's going to start looking for the answer. But watch what she does. <laughs> she covers practically every square inch of this page except right there where that where that face is. She comes back down under it, checks out some of the things there. She even reads the footer of the page. <laughs> Nobody ever reads the footer of a page. She finally gives up. <laughs> she finally says, nope, the answer is not on this page. Now, obviously not everybody did that, but enough people did, did something like that to, to, to cause that difference in the, in the accuracy. So, so why is this happening? Still an ad. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It looks like an ad. She saw that out of her, you know, I think what happened, and literally I think this might even be a subconscious thing, that you see that out of your peripheral vision, you decide maybe subconsciously, ooh, that's an ad. You know, I don't want to look at that. Um, and, then you, and then you don't. So what's interesting is I think we have all been so well trained from our use of the web now, and ads can be anywhere, right? Ads are all over the place now. They're not just banner ads at the top. Uh, that we've become really good at filtering them, filtering them out. Was there a question? Yeah, it is. It is potentially a, a region that we tend to ignore. Um, Yeah, yeah. Now here's what's interesting. I don't have I don't have slides that illustrate this. Uh, I should get Marissa up here to talk about this because this is stuff she's been doing. Um, we actually did a follow up study to this one because we were, in this case the face was obviously not relevant to the to the message. It, we were just trying to use the face as a way of attracting attention, right? So we thought. What if the face is actually relevant to the message? And in particular, what if this is a link to an article, to, to like a news type article or like a financial type article, and the face is a picture of the author of the article? We actually have, we have plenty of cases like that on fidelity.com in, in our news area. So we were curious what the, what the impact of that was. We found the same thing. <laughs> When the face was there, even though they knew they were looking for an article by so-and-so, they had a harder time finding it when the face was there, which I found really surprising. It wasn't, the difference was not as dramatic as what we saw in this study, but there was still a difference. And now here's the other interesting thing that we did. In that, in that follow-up follow study, we also asked people to rate their response to this statement. I trust the accuracy of the information on this page. Now, there's some research out of Stanford and other places that shows that, that faces of people behind a company or associated with a company tends to increase trust, right? That you, you know, you, you, there's real people behind the company, you show their pictures and so forth, it helps. We found that it was significantly worse when the faces were there. Their ratings of, tr I trust the accuracy of the information on this page, got significantly worse ratings when the photos of the authors were there. Now, in a weird roundabout way, I like that. 
And the reason I like that is that I, my hypothesis for what's happening is when the faces are there, it is reminding the viewer that this is just these people's opinion. It's not an official stance of fidelity. And in fact, that's what it is. It is just these people's opinions. It is not our of any official positions. That's actually why I like, you know, in a weird way, it's why I like the fact that, that they actually seem to trust it less when the photos are there, because I believe it means it's reminding them of the fact that this is just these people's opinions. So, questions, comments? Yeah, PJ? I just wanted to say that um, I'm having trouble with the did you know part. I kind of look for headlines that really say something. Oh, yeah, right, headline. right. Like, you know, it's like you just want to erase the headline because it's it's like throwaway words. Yep, we um, didn't. We did in the follow up study I was just now describing. We didn't have those. We didn't have the did you know things. And the other thing is, if you look at the text, there's a lot more white space around the words in there are in the three lines in the in the one that got the um, the good response. Also the. Uh, length of the line is a little bit longer, so yep. I'm looking at it in terms it of the text itself. No, it's a good, it's a great question, and maybe there are, um, you know, maybe there are a lot of other subtleties that are, you know, determining why the plain one came out the best. Um, it, it would be interesting to try manipulating some of those, you know, try because because you know this was a, a lot of these kinds of studies are fairly. Um, you know, they're, 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 yes, we're trying to control some things, but you end up manipulating other things, perhaps, perhaps unintentionally. So it's a good question. Maybe that there's some of the, some other things that led to why they're, why the simple one was better rather than the ones with the photos. I guess the thing that I struggle with is the actual image itself. It's, you know, she looks That's a little scary. Well, she looks like she's selling you something. She looks like something out of a, you know, out of a, uh, you know, page. It, so it, it, it truly is a stock photo. So yeah. So I guess I'm yeah. curious about the selection process and you know uh, yep. that image itself. And if right. It was, and it was the intern picked it. So yeah. you know. Uh, however, like I said, the follow-up study was actually photos of the actual authors right. of the articles, and we found basically the same thing, although not quite as big of a difference, or not the difference between plain and picture was not quite as large as we found in this study. Other questions, comments? Yeah. Is there any difference on tasks that were not uh, personalized? Um, no. No, there were no differences in the other tasks. It was only in that one task where it was the, 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 the answer was right here. Now, by the way, I sort of, we sort of have ignored the fact that um, the light bulb almost did as well. So, so light bulb, I think, was actually the, the dominant choice in here. Uh, and it's interesting that it almost did as well in the study as the, uh, in, fact, in fact, in some cases it was, it was well, in fact, actually in both of these cases, it's statistically not, not distinguishable from, from the none, you know, the no, the no treatment. So it's funny, when I showed this to my boss, who, who, who was, you know, who was in charge of the web design, uh, you know, department for Fidelity, and he, he says, okay, well, the challenge that he is going to give to the web designers and the visual designers is, can you come up with a design that beats basically no design. <laughs> you know, come up with. Can you come up with a design that essentially works works better than nothing, uh, which seems like it should be uh, should be possible. Um, okay. Whoops. 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 So. Okay. So uh, uh, I, I, I'm I'm at the end. Basically, so you don't have to hear any more corny jokes or anything. Um, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to replace sort of traditional approaches to usability, but the argument that I'm trying to make is the more you can do these kinds of comparison types of studies, um, I think you just learn a lot from them. Um, and being able to do these things, I mean, we, we literally do probably at least 50, maybe 80 to 100 sometimes of these online studies a, a year. I mean, we do them practically every week either with our own employees or with customers or with prospects or whoever. Um, and they're actually quite easy to do and you can learn a heck of a lot from them. Um, and, and I think this will help us really move our, our, our field ahead more as a, more as a science than, a, than an art. I mean, obviously it's both, but, but I think this can help us learn. Now, I hope you were keeping track of whether or not you got the right answer, <coughs> excuse me, to, to each of those questions. So there were three, remember? How many people got the answer correct to all three? The statistical significance count. The statistical significance count. <laughs> I don't think so. 
No. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you got to be right. You got to be right. So, 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 so I, I saw Carolyn. You said you got all three of them right. Okay. And so I saw another one or two other hands. So I see you don't count, Michelle. Uh, um, one, two, three of you who got all three of them right. Okay. Uh, was there anybody else? Sorry, that got all three right. Okay. So now there's a tiebreaker question because there are prizes involved in this. Okay. <laughs> the tiebreaker question. And I was trying to think last night, what am I going to use as a tiebreaker question? I don't know why I came up with this one. In what year, I wanted it to be a quantitative answer, okay? In what year was the computer mouse first patented? In what year did, was the patent first issued on a computer mouse? So right now, so this is just for those of you in the tiebreaker. Well, there were, there were three of you, right? So just for those of you on the tiebreaker, write down your answer. And no fear, you mean, no fear, those of you who have to answer it, no fear looking it up on Google or whatever. <clears throat> no, no, the, whoever, whoever comes closest, I doubt that anybody's going to hit it on the nose, but whoever comes closest will be, will be the winner. And then actually there's both a, sec there's a first place and a second place prize here. Okay, so you guys have your answers? Carolyn, you got your answer? Right? You got you to gotta stick with it, whatever you're, whatever you're coming up with. So, everybody ready? The three of you who are, okay. What's your answer? 1980. 1980. Oh, so, so, you have, so you have proof that it's actually, okay, 1980. And who was the other one? Was it, okay, what was yours? Damn. <laughs> the answer is 1970. <laughs> Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. And so I bet some of you may know. See, now the problem is going to be. So, so who, who, who was the person who got that patent? So don't say it. Don't say it. You got you to write it down for now or at least think it out or think it is. So, so uh, uh, you got to get, actually, you got to get the first and last name. How about that? I don't know. I don't know. I think I think some people. So how many people here knew the answer without looking it up on Google? I mean, for the who, for who invented it? Only one. <laughs> oh, a few. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. You guys got your answers. Do you have an answer? I don't know the person. Well, that doesn't help. It. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but but what? Well, I know where it was invented. Where? Where? Xerox Park Lab. Uh, I don't. I think he actually was there yet. Yes. So, name? You have a name? Isaac. I was going to say Xerox. I have no clue who it is. Carolyn, you have a name? My goodness. No, so, well, you probably have, you may have the prizes anyway. So, do you have, the prizes are copies of our two, of our two books, okay? So, the answer is Doug Engelbart. Uh, Doug Engelbart. Um, you already have, okay, well, do you have both of them? Well, anyway, so, so you guys, so here's, you, you get to choose first. Do you have either one or? Uh, what's the other one? This is, this is one on measuring the user experience. This is beyond the usability lab, which is online usability testing. Take your pick. Measuring the user experience. There you go. Okay. And here you go. I hope you don't already have it. Okay, good. And they're both actually signed, too, at least by me. I didn't, sorry, I couldn't get my co-authors to sign. Okay. I, I think we're done. Thanks very much. <laughs> So, so, yeah, I'm happy. You have time for a couple of questions if you want. For some questions if you want now. Uh, and we are certainly happy. I think we're going to do uh, the dessert stuff up here. Is that right? Yeah. Or, okay. And then uh, probably in maybe 10 minutes or so, anybody who's interested will go downstairs and it can show you the, the usability lab. Yep. Um, this is with reference to an earlier um, comment that you made that when you make a change in one place it affects the yeah, other things. Right, right. If you're doing a variety of the smaller um, tests and if you do in fact make some changes then does that like have a ripple effect so well, that you really yeah. are changing so many other things you're not aware of? Yeah. Um, yeah it's, a good, it's a good point and I think what I've seen is that it, it, it basically means that you can't always be confident that something that was working well may not have been broken 
unintentionally, even though you weren't directly working in that particular area, you might have sort of unintentionally broken something in that area by a change that you made elsewhere, which basically means you can't, you, you can't really get away with, okay, I'm just going to test this little piece of things now, and now I'm just going to test this other little piece, and now I'm just going to test this other little piece, because when you test it holistically again, things could be all screwed up. So, yeah. Have you tested uh, messages from senior management, <laughs> the president, the CEO, me uh, text, photos, videos? Because on some, yeah. some sites that I work on where uh, the companies are, be are behind the eight ball to yeah. right. imbue confidence in the right. company, right. They, they're um, trying those. I, 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 I decided that would be a, a career limiting uh, <laughs> potentially. So, so the answer is. So that's the right answer. So, Thank so you. the answer is uh, no, no, we actually have not tested that. Um, I mean, there's some evidence from some of the literature that I've read that, that you know, that, that pictures of, you know, really recognizable. But by the way, the authors of those articles that we tested in that follow-up study, most of them were not people any of us would recognize. I mean, maybe some real geeks into financial stuff might. But, um, but for example, right um, at some point when the, I forget at which, you know, I forget which crash it was, but one of the various economic major crashes that we've had, um, our chairman, the chairman of Fidelity, Ned Johnson, is, is actually a very private person, and he doesn't like having his face or whatever on, the, on our website, but he's actually recognizable by a lot of people. So actually, right after the crash, we did convince him, and we actually did put a picture of him and a message from him about essentially how Fidelity is, you know, and, and, and I think it, it played well, but that's just my, you know, just my opinion. So... Um, I'll show you an interesting here. Actually, sort of, I don't know. This is only tangentially related to that, but let me uh, let me just show you. Well, I actually had I had the screenshot of of Fidelity.com. Um, in fact, I can just go back to that one. It's right toward the beginning, as I recall. Yeah. My big my big difference is one. Um, so we actually did a uh, did a test. So, so literally, we do have this giant ad <laughs> on our on our homepage right now. Um, we actually tested something similar. It wasn't this exact thing, but we tested something similar a while back, where we instead of having a, a big version of it like this, we had a much smaller version um, right here. Uh, and believe it or not, the much smaller version got more attention than this gigantic. You know, I mean, to my way of thinking, this is like, how can you possibly miss <laughs> this? And of course, that's what the, the, the designers and the people who are coming up with this are saying, and the, the marketing people are saying, look, I want this to be totally in their face. And so it was really surprising that, that even though this thing takes up like a quarter of the available screen real estate, a version that was much smaller actually got surprisingly more attention. Now, that's an example of something where that's like, a, like an uphill... Uh, <laughs> Not an uphill battle. It's an impossible battle to convince any anyone, any any business type person or anybody that that's a real thing because they'll, I don't know, they'll come up with all kind of rationalization mind why this this big version actually is is better. And I'm actually trying. I'm actually thinking about doing a study where we do try to get more information around. Um, uh, the memory and, and whether or not you, you're more likely to remember it sometime later if it was a big honking one like like this. So and any any actually I'm curious any thoughts about about that about why yeah. Uh, one way to make sense out of a lot of the results you've shown is to say that people have become very good at recognizing marketing. Yes. And yes. And we all recognize the central truth about marketing. It's a synonym for lying. <laughs> so that anything that I'm quite sure I would agree with that. <laughs> site look like the work of a commercial enterprise with a marketing department will be filtered out and will decrease the public's credibility. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's an interesting view. I mean, we certainly are a big company that has a commercial, I mean, you know, this is a commercial site, and we definitely do have marketing people who are the ones, in fact, responsible for that contribute to an IRA by April 18. Now, I would, I would certainly say there's no 
there's no, you know, lying aspect to that one. And, you know, and then, the, the, hey, look, you've got until April 18th to contribute to an IRA. That's a fact of life. Yeah. And towards that end, would you try out any kind of live testing of variations yes. on the website we and, have, and have quantitative revenue or action yep, actions that. that can be registered? And we have that. We, we have done that. And, and believe it or not, even that. Even that data, you end up getting into all kinds of arguments over, <laughs> over whether or not, because we have in fact found, um, and, and I, I don't have the slides here with me, but um, again, the big versus small, the small actually got a higher click rate, uh, a higher click rate, and then, and then in some cases we were able to show eventually a higher rate in terms of actually opening opening an IRA, but in, in other cases it was not quite so obvious that the that it was that the difference was there. The other the other thing we've seen is, is really even very subtle things. It's amazing how finely tuned our BS detectors are, okay? And, and, and one of the things we found is that even just the presence of this gray gradient in the background actually seems to trigger that, that ad reflex. And, and simply the absence of a gradient like that increased the likelihood of people clicking on it. Uh, and other subtle things like... Um, um, you know, this text is nicely smooth and anti-aliased. It was obviously done in Photoshop and very smooth. And you compare that to the other uh, true text on the page, which actually has a jaggy aspect to it. Uh, the more it's smooth text, our, our ad reflexes seem to kick seem to kick in again and say, "Oh, that's a graphic. I, you know, that's got to be a, it's got to be something I want to ignore." Yeah. We have time for one last question. No fee that turn that concerns me because I think recently I had to do an IRA and you pay up front or you pay behind and then even when you pay behind you still find a fee on your statement. So that's why you're thinking add when it says no fee. If they just said open a fidelity IRA. Yeah. It's a good point. It's it's, a good point. And, that, and that would be a great example of something to test, to do in an A-B test, you know, try it with and without the no fee. So, so in fact, that type of A-B testing is something that we have, uh, we have not done a lot of, but we're, I hope we're going to do much more of it in the future. Uh, and it would be a, you know, it'd be a good, be a good test case, I think. Yeah. Okay. What does the alt text say? There is alt text for it. There is alt text. It, it pretty much says... It, yeah, I think it pretty much says all of that, if I recall. I can't. I mean, I may be wrong. I thought it did, but I could be wrong. So, okay, we need to wrap it up. Let, let's give Tom a hand.